And uh, Glenn just said that he's he's okay um, to speak about it too. Glenn, uh, we spoke with Glenn last week, Cosmo and I did, uh, about his one-click upsell uh, because I think Glenn's been running it for some time. So Glenn, if you'd like to unmute um, and share your 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 experience. Um, yes, I've got. I'm just looking at my uh, one-click upsells now. I actually don't run a Shopify store using WooCommerce. I'm using a specialized plugin for it, but essentially. I've got multiple SKUs in the camping niche and depending on what the person buys, so they've gone through the checkout process, they'll buy something and then there's a lot of conditional statements and, and the, the upsells can get really, really complex. You can say, if they've bought this product, offer them this and, if and then if they, if they say no, then you can say, what about this? And if they say yes, then you say, what about this? And so you can do multiple versions of upsells not just one product so i've got these um one of my upsells i'm doing an offer of three different products after they buy depending on what choice they make so if they do yes you go oh what about this and if they go no then you'll do a cheaper product so it's uh the, the conversion rates are insane it's just all on automatic pilot and i did say to you um one thing that's converting really well for me is the order bumps in the checkout. And I just do, I've got a conversion rate of 50% just by adding express post. Yeah. 50%. And I've got a, yeah. And I've got a 300% a margin on that, on the express post. So that's hmm. amazing. Y'all the average uh, card abandonment rate is 70%, 70%, 70% of people that throw that build a cart are going to jump ship. So doing stuff like what Glenn just did is an absolute complete total prerequisite. I just on, on that abandoned cart chasm, the same software I use, I've got an abandoned cart sequence via email and text message as well. Mm. Uh, and I'm recording the checkout as well. Um, so I can see where abandoned abandons is. But what I do with one of my VAs is I just get them to ring them up and we convert them on the phone. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's smart. That's yeah, awesome. That's what smart. software are you using, Glenn? Pardon? What software are you using? WooFunnels. Oh, okay. Yeah, I forgot. You're WooCommerce. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, uh, yeah, during the conversation, I did say I wanted to move over to Shopify because of a few reasons, but I've heard Zipify is very good. Yeah, Zipify pages. Yep. Yeah, that's yeah, those are the, the go-to, yeah. Yep. But and, oh, uh, yeah, the, 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 the whole um, one-click upsells post purchase upsells and then after that depending on what they've bought i've then got the thank you page with other offers and then we've got the follow-up sequence via emails going hey what about this what about that so and it's just everything's an autom automatic pilot so like, like i said to you guys once i implemented this these features i increased my average order value from 80 dollars to 130 in literally a month and that's that's huge when you're talking about you know, how, yeah how can you scale your CPA to to supplement your your campaigns for more ad spend um, yeah and so that's yeah I mean you can basically scale your business thirty percent faster because of that easy um, it just allowed me to spend more on CPA yep I, I yep. had a lot more wiggle room yeah yeah and you can try new things you can test new things you can test new channels you can have more ad spend yep. everything there's everything comes off of this that that average yep. car value and Sasha just just me thinking about you knowing that you have your products. I mean, I wouldn't say publicize to the world that you can offer, you know, 30% discount on a second, let's say, um, you know, a dog product item. But if you had something that you had the margins for it, taking your, oh, I, you know, I purchased two, would you like to buy a third? Maybe not everyone that buys the one, but maybe people that buy more than one. Uh, something like that could be, would be really, really beneficial. If you have lesser expensive items, you can afford to possibly take off 20 or 30% if they just add one more to their card of a different style possibly too. So just something like that as an example uh, is, is massive. This is my next bullet point. Never stop selling. Um, there's a psychological state of mind a person has to be in when they're buying. And this can actually be measured. This is, it's terrifying. Uh, when they go through and they monitor people's purchase behavior, you're in a different brain state when you are making a purchase than when you're evaluating a product. And when you are making that purchase, you are more receptive to subsequent purchases. People make the catastrophic error of not trying to sell more when somebody's in a, a purchasing mind frame. I'm not, I'm not talking about manipulating people. I don't, I don't like that approach. I don't even like that paradigm, that approach. But 
it's worth noting that there are times when people are more, more receptive to your products than other times. And so, you know, one of my pet peeves is on, a, and this happens in Shopify specifically, there are themes that default to this, where you have, you know, multi SKU store, somebody goes, adds a product to their cart, and it takes them to the shopping cart and prompts them to check out. It's like, what are you doing? Imagine mm -hmm. going to Target and you get your shopping cart and you're roaming around Target and you put the very first thing in your cart and somebody comes sprinting up and then drags you to the checkout line, right? <laughs> like that's exactly what we're doing to people in our store. So A, what Glenn just outlined, I think is brilliant. Give them multiple opportunities to ascend in ways that are value driven. That's the thing that's really key here. Don't just say, do you want this too? Do you want this too? Do you want this too? He has an algorithmically defined way to add products that would be applicable based off of their initial purchase. So do the work, right? <clears throat> like bring value to the page. But if you do that, you don't stop. And Glenn's got, you know, pre-sale, post-sale, email nurture, uh, uh, VA follow-up, never stop selling, John. Yep. There's one thing that I wanted to share. Um, there is an, uh, and I don't know exactly which ones I've spoken to multiple people and they've said multiple, um, well, one client we have has three stores. And they use different versions of these type of products. Uh, this is specifically for the Shopify users here. And I just thought that would be most applicable because I think Glenn, you know, you're on WooCommerce, but I think most people were on Shopify. But if you went into the Shopify apps and you did just look at what they call similar products, this is something you've seen Amazon do, but this is something I've seen a lot. Uh, I think it wasn't this one here. It might've been that one. There was one that I think that stuck out. Uh, that's Stamped.io. Yeah, no, it was frequently bought together. So this one here is one that our client uses that actually has taken them from a 220% return on ad spend to a 400% return on ad spend. I've seen this actually happen. And it's this one here. It was, I didn't think it was because it was an ad um, on the other page. And I was like, well, you know, that was just an ad here. So maybe that's not actually true. But it was this one here, frequently bought together. And it was the one that had 4.9 reviews, 1700 or 4.9 stars, 1761 reviews. Uh, it was a free plan available. I think the 30 day trial, once it ends, it's like 20 or 30 or 40 bucks per month. So it's not too, it's terribly expensive, but when you're looking at a product page and you scroll down and there's, a, there's something that says, here's what's frequently bought together. You'll see Amazon do this. You'll see other websites do this. Clothing companies do this as well. But what they do is they algorithmically look at what is the most commonly purchased items that happen together. So part, person bought a, then they had to go and find B and when a and B were in a cart together, they stick product B on product A's page and product A on product B's page. And so what it does is basically is it creates upsell bundles. Uh, you can do discounts, product recommendations. This is a great tool to use if you wanted to say, well, I don't want to have to go through and dig through years worth of data to find out what is frequently purchased together. This does that for you and then says, hey, these items are bought together more frequently and gives you that kind of AI uh, that will happen, uh, and I'll drop this in a in a in a chat here. Um, oh, it says uh, it says it's frequently bought together is amazing. Give it time, it'll automatically figure out what products work best with one another. Once it does, your average order value will go up like crazy. Plus, it's super cheap. Well, uh, Usama just did my my job for me, so yeah, there you go. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> that's perfect. Um, but yeah, it's 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 great, and that's where the average order value once that increases. Endless possibilities. We'll go through those over this next this next um, you know days. Uh, I guess I would say next weeks uh, worth of, of of content here. But how to run different campaigns to the same product, and you'll find which campaign works the best. It's not always smart shopping. Smart shopping generally is, but it's not always. And so the frequently bought together affords you the ability to spend more and test new areas when you have an average card value that's higher, because you might find scalability in a different campaign that might not have as low a CPA as smart shopping, but can be 10 X quicker. So these are just items to get you prepared for your, you know, one to 10 years of Google ads in the future. Hmm, well said. Um, we talked about order bumps. I'm going to skip it. Know that they're important. And incidentally, y'all, you can, if you don't have something to bump, go find it. Order bump products are actually a little bit easier to find. And what's cool about them is they can only be tangentially related. We've all experienced that to where somebody's like, you know, oh, do you also want it's they've got uh, they've got candy at Home Depot. Right. So like you're allowed to bring in some things that are I, I wouldn't I wouldn't go too far off the rails. But you're allowed to bring things that are tangentially related. But lumber, you need a sucker. Like, right. You know? <laughs> uh, build your email list. 
the smartest e-com guys in the whole wide world say the money comes from email more than anything else. You actually want to be able to fire a guy like me. You don't want to have to pay for traffic forever. And if you work on cultivating your list now, then two, three, four, five years from now, you get to give me the X and you get to bank entirely on email. And what an amazing place that'll be. And, and the email isn't necessarily just from people that purchase. If you put in those little honeypots across your site and you've seen them, you can capture, con you can capture contact information using value-driven content that's applicable to what it is that you're offering. I love how to's specifically. Um, so build your email list, start now. There's this really good quote that I love. I think it's, I think it's a Buddhist proverb, but they say that the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time is today. So start today, start building your email today and celebrate every single individual email. Um, Savita's saying 90% of my traffic is from email marketing to Cosmos Point. I really sell over emails. And you know, I mean, for every, every idiot that likes to come out of the woodwork saying email's dead, what's the very first thing every grown up does when they wake up and the last thing you do before you go to bed? All of us, we check our email. So if you can capture people's email and then, and then use them, I, I think that that could be one of the best things you can do for your e-commerce store. And it's free. I, 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 I hold my email very close to chest when I talk about like giving my, every, it's almost like a default, like, would you like to receive special promotions and offers? I'm like, no, but the ones that I do, oh, I will, I will archive almost daily, every single one that comes into me, but I won't unsubscribe. Cause I'm like, I, I do port purchase from, I'm not ready yet, but I will order from them again in the future. And I want to be like, you know, just in the know of anything comes across from like, oh, I have to have that. Um, and I probably have 20 of them that I look at almost on a daily basis that I will just never unsubscribe to because it's companies I like purchasing from. But yeah, I will I will buy from email. I'm like, oh, I'm like, I've been looking for that. I can't find it. That's a great price. Like, yes, perfect. Um, and I'll order from them. So, but that's that's so true. Like email, we're, we're Google ads people. We, email is the last thing that companies like us talk about because they want to keep you, you know, on the paid traffic, you know, drug right in your vein all the time. Um, but coming from, I hopefully you guys know that I know quite a bit about Google ads. I love email marketing. Um, my wife is a email marketer's dream. Uh, if you know what that means. So yeah, it works. It really works. <laughs> uh, we talked about repeat and or recurring customers. This is where you go to build the, the value. Here's, you can only optimize me to a certain degree, right? You hire solutions, eight, John and I get you, whatever it is, six, seven, eight, nine, nine thousand 9,000% ROAS. That will continue to improve incrementally. 1%, you know, we'll always earn our keep, but the improvement becomes incremental. The optimization of your customers is, is limitless. You can double and then double again and then double again. You can't do that with most acquisition strategies, um, but you can do that in terms of uh, how, how you get your customers to come back um, and, you know, some of your retention plays. And then the very last thing I'll say is build social proof. Ezra Firestone's got his Firestone footer which I think is freaking brilliant. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. Get people to sing your praises by any means necessary because every piece of social proof you create is worth, I think, you know, 10 potential customers. Uh, John, anything to add to that before we keep going? Mm -hmm. I would just say continually build social proof you can. Don't stop there. Um, that's just one thing I've seen sometimes where social proof was like, oh, that's a really good review from 2017. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah, I did it. Check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So never stop that. I think that was just one thing I'd add. I'd add. Nothing, nothing super value bomb, but yeah. This is two two examples of this of of Google Ads uh, with repeatability on customers. Inside of Google Ads, when you're running long enough, you'll have your smart shopping campaign here, and I'm just taking from January to May, so last you know five months of of information here. And when you click segment here. You can actually have what they call conversions and then new versus returning customers. Google will start to catalog who has come back and purchased through the ads. And I have two examples. One is called a company called Notch Gear. They sell hats. Um, they sell hats that are about $27 to $29. Their average car value is fairly high. It's about $50. Um, so 286% on smart shopping, uh, 13 obviously on brand. Uh, they have a lot of people that come back through the brand campaign. I'll kind of share it with you as we go along. But what you'll see here is it doesn't know everyone. It's, this is something that you know is not fully understood by Google just yet of exactly who, who everyone is. But of the 1,600 sales since January, 1,178 are new, and then 260 of them came back and bought something else for another almost 10K. So if you look at 10% of the sales in smart shopping were from repeat customers. And what how Google does this is repeat customers, if they buy something, 
if they still show that they have some level of intent on purchasing a very similar product again, this one's hats, how many people here own hats? And if you do own hats, do you have more than one? Probably yes. So Google does this in terms of saying, hey, the person that bought, they are looking for hats again. And so let's start putting our ads back in front of them and say, hey, you probably could buy from us again. And that happens. The other company that I share with you, the people that have the, uh, the cushions for the earphones, what's really interesting is same thing. Out of the uh, 2,100 sales, 1,500 were new, 449 are mixed between new and, and return. But 226, so 6,500 of the 62,000 are returning customers. Again, 10%. So we're seeing a, a Google is bringing back another 10% of the people who bought back into the fold in the last five months saying, go ahead and buy again. Now, if this doesn't say that email marketing and, and just engaging those customers is a good idea, Google is going to do this whether you like it or not. They're going to they're gonna try to get those people to come back and buy. So it just makes a point of, you know, email marketing, yeah, sounds really good, but it seems kind of hard and, and might be time consuming. And, you know, it's not as automated as I would like it to be. Um, Google will share with you that even Google can can find those people at a 10% rate and bring them back uh, because Google knows that they're ready to buy. So I guess that's just something to say is this is just maybe another area that you didn't know Google does and Google will do it. Um, and obviously that's what the masterclass is. We're taking a deep dive in all things Google. So that's just something that, you know, be prepared for, you know, identifying in the future how many people are new versus returning. Um, and so it's a great great feature to, to rely on to say, should I keep doing my email marketing? Well, Google's reselling them. Why not you? A couple of things that I'm pretty proud of. Um, you've got the property building calculator, which I don't think is, is as big a deal, um, but it's our e-commerce management SOP. Y'all, this is a huge give. This is years of a painstaking work and, and treacherous theft of me going through other agencies and other people that, that run Google ads and then us learning everything that is that we do. This is the actual standard operating procedure that we use to run our ads internally. Uh, and as you're going through the masterclass, I want you to have this because I want you to see the work that we do. Um, if you were to hire us, this is we do this once a week at an absolute minimum. Um, and it's it's broken down the same way that we break it down for our employees. So please, please, please go get that. And we're going to be doing that live, too. Uh, yeah. That's just they'll, be, they'll be able to see what yeah, exactly. Cool. Mm -hmm.